a uh, very good morning all of you can you please confirm if the audio and video is clear to everyone can you please confirm if the audio and video is clear to everyone wonderful i believe uh, you haven't forgotten the deals that you have uh, signed between us in the last class right wonderful no audio uh, is it the case i believe everyone is getting a proper audio uh, so please check uh, mr samsung okay now so uh, in the last class we uh, had just the orientation of the acca fr paper now from today onwards you can say that we will start the discussion of the actual acca fr paper okay now so as you know uh, that uh, in ACCFR, we have divided the entire syllabus into blocks. Now, if you just see the blocks, the blocks works in this manner. Yes, so this is how the block will work. Block 1, block 2, block 3, block 4, block 5 and block 6. So the entire syllabus is divided into, two, uh, into six separate blocks. Now tell me after completion of each block, what will happen? Can anyone tell me after completion of each block, what will happen? A test, right? Now, for the test, we will prepare what? A scoreboard, right? Now, to prepare the scoreboard, I will require your uh, details. So, what I will be doing is after today's class, I will be sending you a Google Sheet. Uh, please update your details in that. Will you do that? Okay. Now, so accordingly, we will prepare a scoreboard accordingly, okay? Now, having said, said that, <laughs> let us start the discussion of the non-current tangible assets. Now, tell me guys, uh, in uh, class uh, 12 or might be class 10, uh, you would have studied that to run a business, to run a business, there are few M that are required, which is called as uh, money, manpower, machinery, right? Do you remember this 3M? Money, manpower, machinery, to run any business in the world, be it any business, okay? Be it any business, manufacturing, trading, service, industry, whatever it is, okay? Uh, any business requires three things, manpower, money, and machinery. Now, we are talking about the third M that is machinery, okay? Now, so as we all know that uh, in any business, assets are the core of the business, okay? We need to have assets. Now, uh, just keep. if you know that assets are of two types, assets are of two types. One is uh, non-current and one is current. But before we go on to the discussion of current and non-current asset, can anyone tell me what exactly is the meaning of an asset? Can anyone tell me what exactly is the meaning of the asset? Come on guys, tell me which provides economic benefit. Very good, Akshar. Very good, Akshar. Okay. Which provides future economic benefits. Not only economic benefit, you can say which provides future economic benefit. Clear? Like, for example, uh, this mobile phone. Definitely, it is giving me economic benefit now, but it will give me future economic benefits as well. Okay. Now, further, you can say any give, take the example of any asset in the world. It provides you future economic benefits. Is it clear? Or in a simple language, if you want to say economic benefit, I am fine with that because in the chapter of conceptual framework, we will exactly discuss what exactly is the meaning of the asset, liability, expense, income, capital, we'll study there. But till the time we are not studying that, I want you to understand a basic definition or a basic meaning of a term asset. I believe that is clear to everyone. Come on guys, tell me. 
asset is anything which gives us economic benefits which provides future economic benefits now what is the meaning of non current and what is the meaning of current if the economic benefit if the economic benefit will be received okay beyond 12 months okay will be realized uh, beyond 12 months then it is called as non current if it will be realized within 12 months then it is called as current tell me is this uh, clear everyone is this clear everyone now now non current i am not discussing about current now because see our discussion is non current tangible assets right now i am discussing only non current now now non current assets are also divided into two parts or three parts particularly i can say uh, which is tangible and another is intangible sir so what was the third part though i am not writing here the third part but yes for your knowledge i can tell the third part is financial assets okay the third part is financial assets like for example investments like for example long term fixed deposits term deposits bank deposits okay all those are called as uh, non current financial assets but i am not discussing financial assets as of now i am discussing non current tangible or intangible what is the meaning of tangible and intangible so tangible is something which has a physical substance what is the meaning of tangible which has some physical substance like for example this watch like for example this uh, laptop like for example uh, this uh, writing uh, machine okay writing equipment like for example this mobile phone all these are tangible assets having some physical substance now what is intangible no physical substance no physical substance is what is called as intangible clear everyone so now you would have understood what exactly is our topic of discussion okay we are discussing non current we are discussing non current tangible asset we are discussing non current tangible assets tell me is this clear everyone what is the meaning of non current tangible assets so if i have to write the meaning of a uh, no, non current tangible asset i can write the meaning of it in simple manner this way okay uh, an asset that is uh, which provides future economic benefits which provides future economic benefits okay uh, beyond which will be realized beyond 12 months and has physical substance can you give me an example of it guys can you give me an example of it can you give me an example of non current tangible asset machinery very good example akshar so basically what happens let's suppose a machinery or any plant or any let's suppose a laptop okay now 
<laughs> now what happens let's suppose this laptop has a life of 3 years this laptop has a life of 3 years now tell me just analyze it for the definition of non current tangible asset tell me is this laptop will this laptop give me economic benefit yes or no will this laptop give me economic benefit yes so that me it means that it is an asset it means that it is an asset now it will give me economic benefit only for the 12 months or more than 12 months more than 12 months right it will give me for three years it will give me economic benefits for three years so it is non-current now tell me this laptop has a physical substance or not this laptop has a physical substance or not yes it has a physical substance so it is tangible now let me take another example a machinery a machinery okay machinery now what happens in a machinery tell me uh, will this machinery give me economic benefit tell me will this machinery give me economic benefit yes it will give me economic benefits now uh, this machinery the economic benefits which will which it will give will it give for 12 months or more than 12 months more than 12 months right so it is non current now does this does this machinery have a physical substance yes it does have a physical substance it means it is a tangible so it does it comes from the purview of non current tangible assets now let me take up another example let's suppose a building a building having a, a a building okay now having a life of 50 years a building having a life of 50 years now tell me is the building an asset is the building an asset yes it is an asset because it will give me economic benefits now will give uh, will building give the economic benefits only for a period of 12 months or uh, more than 12 months tell me more than 12 months so it is non current now does it have a physical substance does it have a physical substance yes it does have it is tangible also so uh, what can be the examples the examples can be a uh, plant a uh, machinery land building etc tell me are you understanding the meaning of non current tangible assets are you understanding the meaning of non current tangible assets Yes, equipment also. There, the exam, there are a lot of examples for that. Okay, I'm not writing all of it now. Further, the standard has uh, broken down non-current tangible assets again into two parts. Understand? Non-current tangible assets. First is plant and equipment, which is covered in the scope of IAS sixteen. Now, the next is investment property is covered under the scope of IAS 40. Now, what is the meaning of this? Understand, understand just by looking into this, you need to ask me a query. You need to ask me a query that, sir, uh, in non-current tangible assets, it is divided into two parts, PPE, property, plan and equipment, which in the short form, I will be calling it as PPE and this in the short form, I will be calling as IP, 
okay now so non current tangible assets are divided into two parts ppe and ip and both of them are covered by separate standards now when i say separate standards meaning thereby that the accounting treatment for ppe will be different and accounting treatment for ip will be different now if the accounting treatment is different don't you think there is a need there is a requirement to separate or to bifurcate or to classify whether this non current tangible asset is a ppe or an ip tell me yes or no do we have this requirement or not because the standards are separate the treatment is separate okay now comes the question how to identify comes the question how to identify whether this non current tangible asset is a ppe or ip for example how to identify whether this laptop which i am using to take up the class is a ppe or an ip whether this mobile phone is a ppe or ip whether this uh, entire system is a ppe or ip okay how to bifurcate you will understand you will understand when you understand the meaning of both of them it is then you will understand why the treatment is different or just okay now <laughs> so let us understand the meaning of each of them ppe and ip so what i will be doing is i will be writing the definition or the meaning of ppe first and then i will write the definition of ip and uh, without me explaining the same i believe you will understand it yourself okay otherwise definitely i am available for you guys okay first of all i will write the definition here p p e r tangible assets now life is uh, greater than 12 months okay and and held for use okay use in what use in what production or supply of goods or services second uh, administrative purposes i will explain the meaning of each of them okay administrative uh, purposes third is uh, a rental to others or or okay this is the meaning of ppe sir uh, why non current tangible is divided into two is only uh, mohit uh, and ojas your query will get answered first of all uh, give me this uh, liberty to uh, explain the meaning of ppe and ip okay it is then uh, it, your queries will automatically get answered okay now investment property what is the meaning of investment property so investment property are investment uh, property are first land building or both okay held for and held for capital appreciation or a rental to others now do one thing just have a look at this chart definitely i am i will be here explaining each and everything to you guys but please try to understand here one by one okay no uh, now uh, no queries 
just listen to me okay uh, no one will post any queries for the next 5 minutes just listen to me very carefully now for a ppe property plant and equipment it is saying that they are uh, tangible assets okay fine we know that it is non current okay fine we know that but it's saying ppe is held for use use in what in production of goods or supply of services now tell me this laptop this laptop is a tangible item yes or no this laptop which i am using to deliver my classes to you guys is it a tangible item yes it is a tangible item is it non current yes it is non current now tell me what is it being used for i am using this laptop for supply of services to you guys tell me yes or no i am using this laptop for supply of services to you guys right now hence this laptop becomes what tell me this laptop becomes what ppe now this mobile phone this mobile phone tell me i this mobile phone is a tangible item yes it is a non current yes now tell me it is being used for what am i supplying services using this mobile phone am i using am i servicing or you can say am i supplying services using this mobile phone no i am not then what i am using it for i am i might be using it for solving the queries of the students i might be using it for taking new admissions okay basically this this mobile phone is being used for admin purposes this mobile phone is being used for admin purposes okay now so this is also a ppe this is also a ppe in that case are you understanding the meaning of ppe are you understanding the meaning of ppe now coming to investment property now investment property clearly demarks itself or clearly separates itself by saying one line item that it is land building or both i am not talking about anything else it says that i am not talking about anything else laptop laptop mobile or any other equipments i am not talking about that i am talking specifically about land building or both are you understanding it or you can write one more thing uh, a part thereof you can write one more thing here okay a part thereof so what is the meaning of a part thereof thereof what is the meaning of a part thereof let's suppose a building has 100 floors or let's so let's not 100 floors let's suppose a building has 20 floors okay now in 20 floors i am having only one floor i purchased only one floor so now you will say that sir you told about land or building this one floor is neither a building nor a land so are we considering that in the scope yes we are considering that in the scope because it says a part thereof also okay even if you are having a part of the building that is also covered in the scope of innovation property is that clear now held for held for now it doesn't mean that all the land and building are in the scope of investment property it doesn't mean that all the land and building are in the scope of investment property now it says that if you have a land or a building if you have a land or a building okay or both or a part thereof held for capital appreciation now many a times you would have seen in your home only that you have a home in which you are residing now uh, at one fine day your parents purchase one more flat why they say okay we see that the property prices are increasing so let's purchase one more so let's purchase one more tell me have you seen that something or have you heard something like this right so now the one which you are the one in which you are staying is called as ppe the one which you purchase for capital appreciation is called as ip is called as investment property okay or if you are giving it on rental to others that is also called as investment property now definitely individually i have explained you the meaning of ppe and ip but i want you to read both the definition and a query will pop up in your mind and i want you to ask me that query i want you to ask that query 
a query should pop up to your mind a query should pop up to your mind both are rented very good now let me answer this query we were discussing about non current tangible assets now let me divide the non current tangible assets into two part two types okay one is a uh, land building uh both or a part thereof now uh, this is a uh, one and any others any others okay any others tell me uh, if i can i do this breakup can i say non current tangible assets into this two type tell me can i say these two can I break the non-current tangible system in these two types? Now, if I am saying, if this uh, land building or a part thereof is you purchased for capital appreciation or let us let me leave it apart, okay? If it is purchased for, uh, let, okay, fine, capital appreciation plus or, not plus, you can say or, or rental to others then it is investment property okay if it is purchased for if it is purchased for production or supply of goods or services or or administrative purpose guys i am not looking into the query as of now but first of all, let me explain this point and then I will look into your queries, okay? Administrative purposes. Then it is a PPE. Now, any others, any others, if it is uh, given for, used for production or supply of goods or services or administrative purposes or rental to others or rental to others then it is called as PPE first have a look at this diagram and then we will discuss all your queries from now onwards first have a look at this diagram is this diagram clear to you is this diagram clear to you or a chart clear to you now comes question of uh sri what's okay that uh why only land and building under investment property okay uh my dear friend please tell me have you ever thought of or heard of purchasing a laptop for investment purchasing a laptop for investment no, you will never do that because the laptop's value will depreciate with time. The value of laptop will depreciate with time. Now, think of purchasing a land. Think of purchasing a land. Tell me, will its value depreciate with time? No, the value will appreciate with time. Think of purchasing a building. Now, definitely for building, you will charge the depreciation in the books of account. Okay. Definitely on the building, you will charge depreciation. Okay. I totally agree on that. But tell me, think practically. Whenever you purchase a building, don't you think you have this in the mind that the value will appreciate with time? The value will appreciate with time. Tell me, don't you think the value will appreciate with time? Come on, guys, tell me. Yes, so it is covered here. Uh, Mr. iPhone, uh, 
guys uh, one uh, specific request please change your name from samsung or iphone to your specific name okay because it uh, it sounds weird when i say iphone or samsung okay so please change your name from the next class i sincerely request that okay now gold is not covered in the scope of non current tangible assets here okay it will be discussed separately. We will discuss separately about the gold. It is not covered in here. It is not covered in here. Now, uh, to say it other way around, yes, uh, Mr. iPhone, people uh, do sometimes purchase it. Okay. But you are talking from the individual people perspective. If you talk from the point of view of a company, if you talk from the point of view of company, generally the company doesn't purchase gold for investment. Generally, no. But it is not the case that they cannot purchase it off. They can purchase it off. Okay. But the accounting treatment will be discussed separately for that. Is that clear, everyone? Uh, okay, fine. Yes, that's a good query, Harsita. Now, let's suppose uh, Harsita query is, sir, what if uh, you have leased the laptop? What if you have given this laptop on rental to others? See here, now it is covered in laptop. Stay, tell me now. Uh, Harsita, tell me. Laptop is covered here. Is the laptop covered here in this part? Is the laptop covered in this part? Harsita, tell me. Is the laptop covered in this part? No. So definitely laptop is covered here. Now, if the laptop is covered here, see what I have. So, just a minute. If the laptop is covered here, then see what I have written. Laptop given a rental to others is also called as PPE. Because laptop is not purchased for investment. Okay. Investment can be there in property only. Investment can be done in property, not in equipments. Are you understanding this part? So that's what I was trying to explain using uh, this uh, diagram You are using this chart. So uh, please uh, go through it once and do let me know if it is clear to everyone till here. Do let me know if it is clear to everyone till here. IP is something uh, leading to future cash inflow uh, directly. Uh, not every time, Apurva. But yes, you are uh, correct, but not 100%. Uh, okay, not every time. Uh, where exactly, Sita? Tell me where do you want me to scroll up? Which part? Okay, fine. Further, we took building on rent for cafe. Okay, building not started on profit. It is constructing. Uh, then it will be PP under PP or rent expense under until start business. Okay, Kamal, you have taken a building on a rent. Oh, you have taken a building on rent that is covered in the scope of IFRS 16 lease. Okay, IFRS 16 lease. Definitely in that case, IFRS 16 will state that you will uh, record the building, you will record the building in your financial statements provided the rental is not for uh, less than 12 months. Okay, in that case, you will record. But I don't want to go into this point as of now, Kamal, because it will be discussed at length in the chapter of leases. Okay. So far, you only understand if you have taken a building on rent, it is on rental, it is on rental, okay? <laughs> the building on rental, if the rental is up to 12 months, if the rent agreement is for up to 12 months, you will directly record the rent as an expense in p and l If the rent agreement is for more than 12 months, then definitely you will record a leased building 
for in your financial statements now the comes the question what should be the classification of the building in your books of account ppe or ip now tell me the building which you have taken on rental is used for what purposes cafe you are running a cafe on that meaning thereby you are using the building for you are using the building for production of goods or supply of services okay production of goods or supply of services in that case it will be ppe now that ppe is under construction now it will be called as capital work in progress it will be called as capital work in progress is that clear kamal now ojas has a query just to be clear land purchased for residing purpose is pp very good if in future i rent the same property it will be ip yes it will be ip so in the future when you uh, rent it out uh, then in that case you have to do the accounting for change in classification or transfers transfer from ppe to ip you have to do the accounting for that in that case okay ojas is that clear is that clear okay very good now any other queries which remains unanswered please discuss that with me now any other query one query i know is unanswered which i'll discuss now but tell me any other query which you think is unanswered please discuss with me now every land is covered in ip either for future for each future sale every land is covered in ip no apurva if land is purchased if land is purchased for uh, you can say production of goods or supply of services it is a property plan and equipment if land is purchased for admin purposes it is a property plan equipment if the land is purchased for rental to others it is an investment property if the land is purchased for capital appreciation it is a uh, you can say investment property if the land is purchased uh, but the use is undetermined you don't know what you want to use it for it is an investment property if you have purchased a land for sale it is an inventory it is an inventory if you purchase something for reselling it off it is an inventory are you understanding it apurva let me write this part Okay. Now, what is the difference of rental to others as per IP and what is the rental to others as per PPE? That's what I was explaining, Miss Ekta and Himansu. Uh, see, understand, uh, there is no difference. Just I am saying, let's suppose you have a land building or others given on rental. It is called as IP. If you have any others given on rental it is called as uh, ppe let's suppose i give i have i had a land okay i had a land which i gave it on rental then land will be classified as P, uh, ip investment property if i uh, rent it uh, rent out this laptop to someone else it is called as property plant and equipment why why because we can purchase a land the land will appreciate in value but this laptop or any other machinery or any other equipments will not appreciate in value they will depreciate with time are you understanding ekta and himansu okay now one student asked me this query that sir why different treatment for PPE and IP. Now tell me, don't you think they are different? PPE is held for use. 
PPE are held for use and IP is held for investment, right? PPE is something which you are using it for your own purpose. Investment property is something which you have purchased for investment in the value. Don't you think they are different? Tell me guys. Right? And hence there is a different treatment for both of them. And hence there is a different treatment for both of them. Tell me, is it clear to everyone now? Is it clear to everyone now? The classification and how we need to do the classification. Is that clear to everyone till here? Anyone having any queries, any uh, concerns here, please discuss that with me. <coughs> Go into your book, please. I believe all of you have the book. I believe all of you have the book. Please uh, go into your book uh, for chapter of tangible uh, non-current assets. If uh, if you have BPP material, fine. If you don't have BPP material and you are referring to any other material, it's still good. No need to purchase new materials, okay? Just ensure that you are having the material updated one, okay? Just ensure that you have the updated material, okay? Whether of BPP or Kaplan, both are equally good, okay? Whichever you are referring to is quite good, okay? Don't specifically go and purchase a BPP one, okay? If you have Kaplan, fine. If you are comfortable with Kaplan, fine. No worries, okay? Uh, now, just go to the chapter of tangible non-current assets, Okay, now in tangible non-current assets, if you go see the chapters which are covered here. So they are covering three chapters, three standards, PPE, property, plant and equipment, IAS 16, investment property, IAS 40 and borrowing costs, IAS 23. Just ignore for the time being borrowing costs. Ignore borrowing cost for the time being. Borrowing cost is not a tangible non-current asset. But borrowing cost is an ancillary activity which I will discuss it later on. Okay. So for the time being, ignore of borrowing cost. So tangible non-current assets has in itself PPE and IP. Now, uh, definitely in your book, it is not discussed at length uh, what, uh, what or how do we have to test the classification of PPE and IP. But I feel that I have discussed that in length. And you must be comfortable with the topic now. Come on, guys, please confirm. For IP, is it necessary to purchase the land by own? What if we receive under development project? Miss Utkarsa, please, I believe you are not understanding my intent. It's not you purchased or if not, uh, you inherit. I'm not talking from the uh, way or the source which you have got. I am just talking from the point of view of if you have any land or building or any or both or any part thereof which you are using for production or supply of goods or services or might be admin purposes then it is an IP. If you have a land building both or a part thereof for capital appreciation or a rental to others, it is an investment property. I'm just helping you identify the classification. How will you classify on any particular date in your financial statements? The source doesn't matter. Whether it is under development, fully developed, just purchased, okay, doesn't matter at all. Guys, please keep your uh, mic on mute. All of you. Is it clear, Utkarsha? Uh, I am sorry if, if I am not able to pronounce your name properly. Okay. So please excuse me for that. Now, guys, tell me, uh, I believe I have devoted sufficient time in this in the discussion of this classification, but still, is it clear, everyone? I want to go quite very slow. There is no rush. I don't have any uh, rush, okay? But just I want to be very much clear that, okay, the concepts are clear to you. So the land and building purchased for resale will be treated as inventory. Yes, yes. If you purchase anything for resale, it is inventory. If you purchase anything and it does, and that is held for sale, 
it is inventory yes then is2 aditya very good inventory under the scope of ias2 if a broker of land purchase a land then it will be considered as ppe or not uh, okay tell me what is it what will he use it for a broker of land he purchases the land for what purpose tell me for what purpose purpose matters a lot my dear friend purpose matters a lot tell me what is the purpose selling on high price means it is held for sale inventory now milna has a query if purchased for capital appreciation and then sold later on okay fine now see what is your purpose is your purpose to uh, gain the uh, gain a value capital appreciation then might be sell it off later on i don't want to sell it now <laughs> i don't want to sell it now i want to uh, gain in value and then might be i will sell it in the future okay then it's an investment property okay so basically what i want you to assess is what is the purpose what is the purpose Is that clear, everyone? Wonderful. Now, what I will be doing here is I will be discussing PPE separately, investment property separately. Okay. So from now onwards, uh, no discussion of investment property. I I am taking one particular topic now. That is I A S. 16 which deals with property plant and equipment so this is my uh, this is where i will start the discussion of ias 16 property plant and equipment now point number 1 before I start the discussion, one more point to be discussed with you guys. After completion of one standard or one topic, after completion of each topic, you have to do one thing. And comes the question, what? Then I will tell you that you have to make a mind map. Okay, you have to make a mind map. Sir, what is mind map and why we have to do that? Tell me. I will just show you the notes of the previous batch. Okay, just give me a minute. FRST 23. Now see, this is the notes of the previous FR batch. Just see how many notes are there. Starting from here, ending uh, till here. Okay, ending till here. Now tell me, be very practical and tell me, will it be possible for you to revise the entire set of notes a day before the exam? Will it be possible for you? Tell me. No. No. So does that mean that you will not revise before exam? Does that mean that you will not revise before the exam? You will revise. But the question comes, how? So from now onwards, after completion of each topic, you will make a summary of the notes. Okay. You will make a summary of the notes. Try to make the summary in one page. Try to make the summary in one page. How many chapters are there? There are 23 chapters. So 23 pages. Now tell me, will it be possible for you to revise 23 pages in one day? 
tell me or if not 23 max to max let's suppose even if i take two pages per chapter then it comes to 46 page tell me will it be possible for you to revise 46 pages in one day yes very much possible but but will it be possible for you to revise 600 pages in one day no not possible right so from now onwards start preparing your own summary notes start preparing your own summary notes and once you have done preparing the summary notes please send it in the group okay please send that in the group others what you can do whatever notes others are sharing you also refer it off you let's suppose let's suppose what happened how it works out i will tell you <laughs> let's suppose there are 100 students in a group okay now what you have to do is all of you share your notes in that group you also share your notes in the group now once others shares the notes once others share the notes just all of you go through it for others notes all of you go through it now you will be seeing 99 other notes okay in the 99 notes you might find something good you might find something good so whatever good good part is there just take it off and uh, add that in your notes uh, normal part leave it leave it off as it is but if you find something really good in any notes just take it off and use it in your notes it will really help you in a wonderful manner tell me will you do that but it will work out only if all of you do it off if one or two students does it uh, it won't be of that great help now so let's start with the discussion of uh, ia 16 property plant and equipment so point number one is meaning tell me do you already don't you think you already know the meaning of property plant equipment now you already know the meaning of property plant and equipment right so uh, i will write here already discussed above now coming to second part <coughs> sorry guys now tell me one thing guys, uh, definitely you know that whether this is a PPE or not, but tell me. Do you, uh, will you, uh, will you uh, recognize all the PPE in your financial statements? Will you uh, recognize all the PPE in your financial statements? Tell me. Will you uh, recognize all the PP in your financial statements? Himansu is saying no. Can you tell me why? Himansu, can you tell me why? Don't be afraid. Uh, just be don't, don't hesitate in answering. Please answer it off. Aditya is saying yes. So if you are saying yes or if you are saying no, please can you tell me why? Maybe in notes to accounts. I'm not talking in notes to accounts or just I'm specifically talking about in the financial statements when I'm saying financial statements. Uh, I am referring to uh, uh, SOFP and PNL. Okay, SOFP and PNL. Tell me, will we record that in the financial statements? We may not know the purpose of that asset. Isita, I think you are deviating from the topic now. Okay, if you are telling it is a PPE, then you know the purpose. If you are telling it is a PPE, then you know the purpose. Right? Then you know the purpose, Isita and Apurva. Right? It, if you know the purpose, it is then only you have classified it as PPE. And what I told, will I recognize all the PPE in the financial statements? My question specifically says that the purpose is specified. You know the purpose. Okay? Now, comes the question of a recognition principle.
वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ रिकॉग्निशन प्रिंसिपल लेटेस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट फर्स्ट वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ रिकॉग्निशन प्रिंसिपल सो इट से we uh, now know that the asset is ppe we now know that the asset is ppe but the question that comes up but the question that arises here is will uh, we uh, record all ppe in fs will we record all the ppe in fs the answer can be uh, yes the answer can be a uh, no depending on conditions depending on whether it satisfies a recognition principle or not now comes the question what is a recognition principle so this is what is our topic now comes the question what is a recognition principle are you understanding it now so the recognition principle states a recognition a uh, principle states a ppe a property plant and equipment can be uh, recognized just give me a minute let me write it out then i'll definitely show everything okay pp can be recognized in financial statements if and only if it satisfies both the below mentioned conditions and now what are the two conditions the conditions are it is probable that future economic benefit will flow to entity and costs can be measured reliably now understand just look into this and try to understand the meaning of it just look into this and try to understand the meaning of it so basically it says that a ppe which we have already identified that it is a ppe or not a ppe will be recognized will be 
रिकॉग्नाइज इन द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इफ एंड ओनली इफ ओके इफ एंड ओनली इफ इट सेटिस्फाइज बोथ द बिलो टू कंडीशन इफ इट सेटिस्फाइज बोथ द बिलो टू कंडीशन बोथ हैज टू बी सेटिस्फाइड एंड दैट द रीजन वाई हैव रिटन हियर एंड if it satisfies both the below two conditions now coming to the two conditions guys okay now before i discuss tell me uh, where do you want to write i am right showing the slides here you can write it first and then i will start explaining it off first you can write it off and then i will start discussing these two uh, conditions let me know once done done very good it is uh, okay fine uh, skip away this uh, you can say uh, this recognition principle let me take up an example and discuss with you see uh, what i'm what is happening i am using a laptop okay for taking the classes now tell me the classes uh, runs for continuous 3 hours for acc fr level it is it runs continuously for 4 uh, to 4 and 1/2 hours if it comes to sbr level now tell me if the laptop will run continuously for 4 hours don't you think it will get heated specifically it will get really heated right so now what happened uh, for uh, uh, since the laptop was getting heated i purchased a thermal device okay which will absorb the heat of the laptop okay now after i purchased it costed me around 5000 something okay now after i purchased the uh, the device when i was trying to install that in my laptop it didn't work out it didn't work it didn't work okay though there was no fault with that there was no fault with that device there was no fault with that device it was perfectly fine but it was not compatible with this laptop and now i purchased that with amazon i purchased that with amazon okay and there was no refund there is no no return policy of that equipment there was no return policy of that equipment no one else will also purchase it from me okay no one else is purchasing it from me okay i tried to re uh, sell it to someone else but no one else is purchasing it from me now tell me that uh that equipment tell me does that equipment have economic benefits does that equipment have economic benefits yes it does have but it will will it flow to the entity will it will the economic benefits from that equipment flow to the entity tell me no it will not flow so that's what it says it is probable that the future economic benefit will flow to the entity it is not flowing so tell me now tell me will i uh, shall i recognize that equipment in my financial statements shall i recognize that equipment in my financial statements no i will not recognize no i will not recognize okay now now what happened uh what happened uh, on my birthday on my birthday i got a gift from i got a gift okay i got a gift from my uh, let's suppose from my uh, father now uh, he gifted me uh, this uh, let's suppose uh, this screen okay this is screen now tell me can i measure the cost of this screen okay can i measure the cost of this screen no i cannot no i cannot no i cannot okay now now uh, <coughs> i will definitely explain uh, gurdeep just give me a minute please now uh, what happened uh, while i was traveling someone uh, stole my watch okay while I, while i was traveling someone stole my watch think from the point of view of that thief think from the point of view of that thief the thief who stole my watch okay uh, do you think he uh, will be able to measure the cost of that watch no so is this condition getting satisfied for him the cost can be measured reliably is it no so basically the standard says that if these two conditions can be set are satisfied if these two conditions are satisfied it is then only you can recognize an asset in your uh, a ppe in your financial statements otherwise you cannot otherwise you cannot tell me is that clear everyone tell me is that clear everyone 
wonderful okay so this is what is the recognition principle now gurudeep let me explain it again for you so gurudeep what i am trying to say here is i as part of the first step we know that it is a ppe we know that it is a ppe but what we are assessing here is shall we recognize that ppe in my financial statements or not now when i am assessing whether i should recognize it or not uh, i have to assess i have to assess two things whether this asset whether this asset will give me economic benefits or not okay think of it this way there is one person there is a person okay oh just there is one of your friend there is one of your friend okay in the market he has a reputation that he is a very good person but that person treats you very bad that person specifically treats you very bad tell me ojas what will you say that person is a good person or a bad person bad person right why because you are thinking from your point of view right similarly this calculator has economic benefits fine but i will see whether it is giving economic benefit to me or not i don't i don't want to assess whether it has economic benefits or not i want to assess it is giving me economic benefits to me or not are you understanding it ojas is this point clear point number 1 okay it is probable that future economic benefits will flow to the entity and the cost can be measured reliably <laughs> if these two conditions are satisfied then yes i will or we will uh, recognize the ppe in the books of accounts or the financial statements tell me is the recognition principle clear to everyone is the recognition principle clear to everyone anyone having any queries here now point number 3 is measurement principle now let me tell you one thing guys in every standard which you study you have to study four things you have to study four things whatever standard you study you have to study four things first is the meaning identification classification okay this is the first part second part is recognition third part is measurement and the fourth part is disclosures this is what you have to study in all in every standard which we study okay always four things always you have to study four things only four things nothing much only four things meaning step uh, first part is meaning identification uh, definition classification okay second part is uh, recognition third part is measurement fourth part is disclosures now what is the meaning of measurement now understand understand so far we studied so far we studied whether it is a pp or not right we studied this in the meaning then we studied uh, if it's a ppe whether it will be recognized in financial statements or not this we studied as part of a recognition principle right now the third question okay third question is if it's a ppe and has to be recognized in fs 
then at what amount at what amount and this becomes measurement principle which is the point of discussion now tell me are you understanding it tell me are you understanding this part so now measurement principle shall we start the discussion of measurement principle guys Shall we start the discussion of measurement principle? Okay. Now, uh, measurement principle has to be discussed at in two stages. What is the two stages? Let's suppose this is a laptop and the life is three years. The life of the laptop is three years. So now when I am saying that we have to discuss the measurement principle, we have to discuss it at two stages. The two stages are stage one the date when you purchase the laptop the date when you actually purchase the laptop how will you recognize or how will you measure the laptop on the initial recognition okay how will you measure the laptop at initial recognition second second stage over the life of the asset that over three year period, how will you measure the laptop? Over three year period, how will you measure the laptop? So it is called as initial measurement principle. Initial measurement and then subsequent measurement. initial measurement and subsequent measurement this is what you have to study is that clear is that clear so first of all we will study initial measurement first of all we will study initial measurement so now the point number was three now i am starting starting point number four point number four okay so i can write initial measurement as on the date of purchase and subsequent measure as over the life of asset. I believe that is very much clear to all of you till here. Now, point number four. Initial measurement. of PPE initial measurement now tell me think of it like this let's suppose you purchased a laptop okay think of it like this from Amazon okay I need a name okay so which whose name I selected tell me okay I'll take Prince
Okay, Prince purchased a laptop from Amazon. Okay, now uh, the market price of the laptop was let's suppose dollar uh, one thousand two hundred. Okay, but uh, Prince uh, purchased it in a big billion sale, and Prince has to pay only dollar one zero five zero. Tell me, Prince. At what price will you uh, recognize the laptop in your books of account? At what price will you recognize the laptop in your books of account? The price was price of the laptop was twelve hundred, but you paid only one zero five zero. Tell me, uh, everyone, tell me at what price will Prince recognize the laptop or measure the laptop in its books of account? One zero five zero or twelve hundred? The price, the market price of the laptop was twelve hundred. Then why one zero five zero? Now there are there are double answers. There are uh, different answers that are coming. Okay. So now Himanshu is doing saying twelve hundred. Asna is saying twelve hundred. Uh, Siddharth is saying twelve hundred. Isita is saying one zero five zero plus discount. This is twelve hundred. Now. <clears throat> Milna is also saying 1200. Guys, think of it practically. You are thinking of it uh, this way. Uh, theoretically, don't think theoretically. Please place yourself in that situation. Please place yourself in that situation. Let's suppose you purchased a laptop you are here. Okay, tell me. Let's suppose after purchasing the laptop, you came home and your parents asked Tell me, uh, tell me, Milna, at what price did you purchase a laptop? What will you say? 1200 or 1050? 1050, right? The laptop costed you 1050, not 1200. Are you understanding this part? Are you able to interpret this part? Guys, please uh, don't unmute yourself. Okay, now. <laughs> At the value of outflow of gas. Very good, Prince. Exactly, Mohit. Okay, so standard says that, standard says that initial measurement has to be done at the cost. Has to be done at cost. Now comes the question, what is the meaning of cost? What is the meaning of cost? Now the standard explains this meaning of cost. Cost means. Purchase price okay after trade discounts. Okay, after adjusting trade discount, then add any uh, non refundable taxes what is the meaning of it i will explain don't worry at all about it add borrowing costs as per ias 23 what is the meaning of this i will explain don't you worry at all about it Okay, then add any directly attributable costs incurred to bring the asset in 
लोकेशन एंड कंडीशन इंटेंडेड बाय मैनेजमेंट व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस आई विल एक्सप्लेन इंटेंडेड बाय मैनेजमेंट ओके this gives you the total costs i believe this is what they are including there is one more thing but i don't think they are including that part here okay fine let me include that part also add okay this part which i am writing now i will be discussing it at very small discussion because this part which i am writing now will be discussed at length at sbr level okay uh provision for decommissioning site restoration or removal costs this is the meaning of cost of asset first of all write this and then i will discuss it one by one we'll discuss uh, mr samson first of all write this uh do one thing uh anyways uh, let's take a break of 10 minutes okay then uh, till then you can write in the break also and then we'll resume back at 10:40 okay let's resume back at 10:40 in the break you can write this part also audio and video clear everyone so we have to discuss the meaning of cost now uh, basically in the meaning of cost i believe that you already uh, know the meaning of this part purchase price after trade discount this part is very much clear tell me okay this part is clear now but one thing you have to understand what is the meaning of trade discount so uh, i will write here point number 1 discounts do you know the discount are of two types do you know the discount are of two types i believe in the earlier classes uh, in might be in class 2 10 or 12 we would have studied the discount are of two types one is called as trade discounts or it is also called as a uh, rebate okay uh, another is called as cash discount
can you tell me the purpose of giving each of the discount the trade discount is given to promote to promote sales bulk orders yes why is cash discount given to promote early or timely payment right to promote early or timely payment is what is cash discount given or trade discount now what i am saying is if it is a trade discount if it is a trade discount which is linked directly to the purchase hence you have to adjust to cost of asset but if it is a cash discount if it is a cash discount this is to be adjust to cost of asset and i will say no to it no rather i will say that record that in p and l tell me is this part clear now why because see uh, when i am getting a trade discount it is why because i have purchased bulk i have purchased in bulk okay so due to my purchase i am getting this discount but when i say cash discount it is why because uh, i am making delay in payment early payment it is because of that so it is not linked with purchase it is not linked with purchase rather it is linked with settlement rather it is linked with settlement and hence this is to be treated separately hence this is this is to be treated separately is that clear everyone is that clear everyone so uh, be very clear here be very very clear here many students make this mistake in the exam but you are not required so for that what i am doing here is i am writing and it is an alert point i am writing it as an alert point so please wherever i believe that you can make a mistake i will write it as an alert point okay so this is an area where you can make a mistake so hence i have done it as an alert point is that clear everyone tell me guys alert how it is shown in pnl so it is shown in pnl as other income okay it is shown in pnl in other income is it clear it is clear what i will do for you guys is i will include a file here just give me a minute i think it will give you a really good understanding about the things okay financial statements performa so now what i have done for you guys is i have included a file here okay so now here i will show you the presentation of each and everything here i will show you the presentation of each and every thing now so today we discussed about two things first of all i will discuss here i will write here statement of financial position okay then i will write for you guys as a statement of profit or 
लॉस नाउ इन स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल पोजीशन फर्स्ट कम्स असेट्स एंड देन कम्स इक्विटी एंड देन कम्स लाइबिलिटीज नॉन द लाइबिलिटीज फर्स्ट कम्स नॉन करेंट लाइबिलिटीज एंड देन कम्स लाइबिलिटीज करेंट okay now in assets also first comes uh, non current so i will write here like this uh, non current assets and then i will write here current assets do not write this okay just see it off now what i will be doing here is in the non current assets tell me what all i will write in the non current sets what all i will write tell me first of all i will write property plant and equipment okay then uh, then i will write what investment property okay then i will write what इन टैंजिबल असेट्स ओके वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट दीज थ्री सो आई एम राइटिंग ओनली दीज थ्री सो अज एंड वेन वी विल डिस्कस अज एंड वेन विल डिस्कस विल स्टार्ट राइटिंग इन दिस परफॉर्मा इज दैट क्लियर अज एंड वेन विल डिस्कस एनी आइटम विल सो how and where it will get presented in the financial statements. I believe that will give you a really good understanding about the things. Tell me yes or no. okay so we discussed these three so we wrote these three in the plan tell me did we discuss anything about current assets yes we discussed one thing about the current assets tell me what we discussed that in the current asset we have to show inventory in the current asset we have to show inventory so i will write only inventory i am not writing anything else equity did we discuss anything no so i am not writing liabilities did we discuss anything no i am not writing liabilities current or non current did we discuss anything no so i am not writing now statement of profit or loss in the statement of profit and loss first of all you will write a uh, revenue from operations then you will write other income okay uh, so this will give you a total income okay or what i will do i'll change the format a little bit revenue from operations uh, minus cost of goods sold guys this uh, format for pnl is from an ifrs perspective if you talk specifically from an indian perspective no we don't follow this format we don't follow this format we follow the format in india we follow the format as per schedule 3 but for acca examinations are you required to follow the schedule 3 format or will you dis, uh, write this format in the exam tell me this format or schedule 3 format tell me which format will you follow in the exam this format but uh, remember this thing in mind remember this thing in the mind that in india we follow schedule 3 format okay but for exams we will follow this format this is the format which is used uh, internationally but in india we use the format as per schedule 3 so it will give you a gross profit then it comes a distribution expense 
एडमिन एक्सपेंस ओके लॉट अदर एक्सपेंस कम्स अप हियर सैलरी एक्सपेंस दिस इनकम इन्वेस्टमेंट इनकम अदर इनकम सो हियर कम्स अदर इनकम ऑल्सो यू माइट राइट अदर इनकम डिस्काउंट रिसीट ओके सो अज एन वेन विल डिस्कस विल फिल दिस फॉर्मैट ओके ना नॉट फिलिंग इट राइट अवे बट अज एन वेन वी डिस्कस विल फिल दिस फॉर्मैट आई बिलीव इट इज क्लियर टू यूर एवरी वन इट इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन नाउ ओके नाउ I will make uh, one more uh, tab here. I'll make one more tab here. Just give me a minute. Which will be called as building. Blocks. Let me move this tabs here at the top. Hmm. So now, if you see that we have a uh, two separate tabs, one tab for the building block, okay, one tab for the building block, and one tab for the financial statements. So in financial statements, whatever is, uh, whenever it comes to the presentation part, I will take you to this present uh, financial statement performer part. And when it comes to the building blocks, means any concept, any generic concept which gets applied everywhere, is what I will discuss in the building block. Is that clear, everyone? What is the name of this format? There is no name specifically. Okay, there is no name for this format specifically. Tell me, guys, is it clear, everyone, till here? In initial measurement, we take only trade discount and ignore cash discount. Uh, not cost discount, Vanika. It's cash discount. Okay, cash discount. C S it. Okay, now, yes. Now, uh, logic I have already explained because trade discount is linked with the purchase, and hence we adjust to the cost of the asset. But cash discount is linked with the settlement, and hence it is not. It is not to be adjusted to the cost of the asset. Rather, it will be transferred to P and L. Is that clear, everyone? Tell me, guys. Is that clear, everyone? Wonderful. Now, non-refundable taxes. What is the meaning of non-refundable taxes? Point number two. Non refundable taxes. Let's suppose. Uh, I don't know whether you are aware of it or not, but let me explain it to you. Let's suppose you want to purchase a laptop. Okay, the laptop is priced at a uh, dollar nine hundred. Okay. Now let's suppose uh, the government charges a GST at the rate of eighteen percent on this laptop, so which comes to dollar one eighty, right? So the price becomes how much? One zero eight zero. Tell me, yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? Okay. So now, if any person has to purchase a laptop, he has to pay one zero eight zero. Now let's suppose there are two persons. uh one is himanshu okay and uh, another is uh, let's suppose vanika now 
what happens himanshu is a, a person who is a business it's a business himanshu is a business okay is a business entity but vanika is a, will be purchasing this laptop for personal use personal use now what happens uh, standard says that or not standard basically the gst law states that the law of the country states that if you purchase it for business definitely you have to pay 180 tax but you will get the refund of it so himansu will definitely pay 1080 at the time of purchasing the laptop okay so for himansu it will be like this amazon amazon himansu okay and gst gst department now himansu will purchase a laptop himansu will pay 1080 okay now the gst department will transfer him 180 refund now for vanika how it will happen vanika amazon okay vanika will purchase laptop Vanika will pay 1080 for purchasing the laptop. Now, GST department will not transfer anything to Vanika. Zero. Okay. Now, don't ask me why they are transferring, why they are not transferring. Just understand that they are transferring. Okay. I am not going to GST law now. I am just saying if it happens, what is the accounting treatment that has to be done? Okay. Now, so focus on this part now. GST transfer is 80, GST department is transferring 0. Now, in this case, the cost for Hemansu is 1080 minus 180 is equal to 900 is the cost for Hemansu. But for Vanika, the cost is 1080. Same laptop, same uh, selling entity, but the cost is different for different persons. Right? Why? Because uh, for Hemansu, the laptop, the, this one. For Himansu, this uh, tax of 180 was refundable, okay? But for Vanika, it was not refundable. So that's why for Vanika, what we have done is we have added the non-refundable taxes. We have considered the non-refundable taxes. Is that clear, everyone? Is that clear, everyone? Uh, let me put it other way around. Okay, fine. This is what this is. This is correct. Tell me, is it is it clear, everyone? Now, this is a concept of non-refundable taxes. Now, borrowing cost as per IS-23. Definitely, I will be explaining uh, this concept as part of IS-23. Not now. Not now. So, this you can say it's as on hold. This you can say kept on hold. Mostly, I will start this concept tomorrow itself. But, take it, no worries. On hold as of now. Now comes the next part that is any other directly attributable costs, any other directly attributable costs incurred to bring the asset in the location and the condition intended by the management. Now, please try to understand. Let's suppose, let's suppose I purchased a very heavy machinery. I purchased a very heavy machinery. Okay, now tell me when I purchased, I made the payment. I made the payment. Okay, now will I use it at the seller's premises only? Will I use it at the seller's premises? No, I have to bring it to my premises, right? So location, location, any costs to bring the asset to my location to be capitalized. Now machinery, when it comes, it comes in dismantled form, right? So now I have to get it installed. Now I have to get it installed. Now once when when I have to get it installed. Okay. So that means the condition. That means the condition. So any costs incurred to bring the asset in the location where I want to use it and the condition how I want to use it any cost incurred till that time will be capitalized meaning thereby basically the transportation costs the delivery costs the you can say uh installation costs 
Now, Vanika is having query by capitalized means what? When I say capitalized, it means add to the cost of the asset. Okay, Vanika? Okay, but when, whenever I say capitalized, it means add to the cost of the asset. Whenever I say capitalized, it means recognized in the SOFP. Whenever I say uh, capitalized, I mean to say cap recognized in SOFP. Okay. Now. Let us discuss more about directly attributable cost. Point number three. See, uh, this any other directly attributable cost is a very judgmental area. It's a very judgmental part, okay? Directly, any other directly attributable costs. any other directly attributable costs now it is a very quite uh it's quite uh, you can say uh judgmental area now how specifically let me discuss that part I try to understand here it includes something and it excludes something we'll discuss why includes why excludes we'll discuss but let me first of all write what does it include and what does it excludes it includes employee costs it includes uh, costs of site uh, preparation it includes transportation costs it includes installation costs it includes professional fees it includes testing costs Okay, uh, I'm giving a star mark here. Why? I will explain it to you. It includes directly attributable over its. Now, It excludes something also. So for that you can write it excludes advertising costs. You can write this along with me guys. It includes costs of uh, employee training. It includes uh, survey costs. It excludes uh, market survey costs. Okay, it excludes sorry. Costs of opening 
ceremony it includes uh, it excludes a relocation costs it excludes initial it excludes initial operating losses it excludes uh, you can say uh, allocated overheads Now, first of all, write this and then I will explain the meaning of each of them. Do let me know once you are done writing and then I will start explaining each of them. Done? Okay. Now, write one more thing here. This list is an illustrative list. It is not an exhaustive list. It is not an exhaustive list. I believe you understand the dif uh, difference between illustrative and exhaustive. Meaning thereby I can write here E T C. There can be something else also. I can write here E T C. There can be something else also. But this is what we have identified. This is the meaning of illustrative. They are just the examples. They are not the complete list. Is that clear everyone? Why? Because as I mentioned that it is a very high uh, judgment area that uh, a, a professional or a professional accountant has to apply its judgment and take a decision whether this cost can be capitalized or it cannot be capitalized. When I say cannot be capitalized means recognized in P and L, recognized in P and L. Now, uh, is that clear everyone? Can shall I start discussing one by one each and everything? Okay, so first of all, uh, what I will do here is point number A. Point number A is employee costs. Now, in employee cost, there are two things. Okay, for construction Or you can say development of a set or for training of employees. Now, so the answer, okay, be, uh, tell me, definitely you know the answer that this will be add to cost of asset. Why, why, understand why? There are, see, whenever I need uh, any asset, I have two options. Either I can purchase it directly or I can construct in on my own, right? I can construct it on my own. Let's suppose I'm constructing an asset on my own. My employees are working for that construction. So don't you think the employees who are working on that construction of that asset, the salary which I'm giving to those employees is for the construction. Is it is it is directly linked to the construction of the machinery and has those employee costs or those salary costs has to be added to the cost of the asset. Tell me, does it sound logical? Right now, for training of employees of for new machine purchase, let's suppose I have purchased a new machinery. Okay, I have purchased a new machinery. Now, definitely, I need to train my employees on how to use that machinery. Tell me yes or no. 
I need to train my employees on how to use that machinery. Now, the training which I'm giving to my employees, the training which I'm giving to my employees, there comes a question that the cost of the training, can we capitalize that? Tell me, can we capitalize that? The answer is you are saying no. Can you tell me why? Can you tell me why Aditya, Utkarsa, Ankita, can you tell me why? Why you are not able to, why will we not capitalize it? I will tell you. Go to the recognition principle. What is the recognition principle says? It is uh, probable that the economic benefits will flow to the entity. Now tell me what is happening. These employees to whom we are giving training, don't you think it, it is possible that the, uh, on the after taking the training, the very next day an employee says, Tata, Tata, I'm going, right? Now tell me in that case, will you get the economic benefits or someone else will get in the market now? Do, uh, can we control employees? Can we control employees? Tell me, can we control employees? No, we cannot control employees, right? So hence, for that reason, uh, we will not be able to capitalize this cost. PLL. Is this clear, everyone? Employee cost is clear, everyone? Now, point number B. So, employee cost, I believe this part is clear now. This part is also clear to you now. Please tell me yes or no. These two parts are clear. Employee cost and cost of employee training. Now, coming on to uh, advertising costs. Point number B. Advertising costs. Now understand guys, advertising costs, when we advertise anything, is it certain that we'll get the customers? Is it certain that we get the customers? No, it's not certain. It They might come, they might not come, right? Do we control the customers? Do we have the control? No. Clear? Tell me guys, clear? See. So I believe advertising cost is also clear to you. Now, come here. Cost of site preparation, wherever you have to locate the set or wherever you have to place the set, you are pre preparing the site. Okay. So whatever cost that comes up has to be capitalized, has to be capitalized. For the same reason that, for the same reason that uh, any cost incurred till the time the uh, asset is brought in the location and the condition how the management wants to use it, okay? Hence, you will capitalize all the costs. But it has a probability to generate the inflow. Very good. But can you control? Apurva, tell me, can you control the advertising costs? Can you control the advertising costs? No, right? You cannot control. The point here is, you don't have the control over it. You don't have the control over it. See, let's suppose take an example. Employee costs for construction or development. Do you have the control? Yes, you have the control. If an employee is not constructing, if an employee is not working, I will not pay. Simple. I will pay only if they construct or if they help in development, right? Otherwise, we will not pay. Simple. So we have the control, but here in advertising or in the, you can say, uh, staff training, we don't have the control over anyone. Okay. Now transportation cost. Yes, we will capitalize. Installation cost. Yes, we will capitalize. Professional fees. Yes, we will capitalize. Testing cost. I will discuss. Okay. Market survey cost. I will discuss. Cost of opening ceremony. Tell me, is it giving me any economic benefits? Cost of opening ceremony or the puja. Let's suppose we have done a puja before starting the, uh, before starting a factory. Tell me, does it give me any economic benefit? No. So this will not be capitalized. Relocation cost. Let's suppose I purchased a TV. I purchased a TV. Okay. Now the price for purchasing the TV was, let's suppose $800. Now I brought the TV, the television from the shopkeeper's store to my home. Okay. 
to my home then what happens to what then what happens uh, the cost of transportation will be capitalized why because it is helping me uh, to bring the asset in the location where it wants to where it will be used but now let's suppose after uh, three months i am uh, relocating my home i am relocating my business okay now when i am relocating my business again i have to transport my transfer my tv to my new home tell me will this cost be capitalized no no this will not be capitalized initial operating loss i opened a factory i opened up a factory okay and initially i am getting losses tell me will i capitalize it to the cost of factory no i will not i will record these losses in p and l okay now some student himanshu is having query in a cost of opening ceremony uh, himanshu understand when i am talking about costs of opening ceremony it is exactly similar to advertising costs okay do we control it no we will not be able to control professional fees now before acquiring an asset i am taking a professional uh, advice okay i a technical advice that uh, is this asset a good or not will this asset be a feasible or not so that is called as professional fees now comes testing costs now now testing costs are of two types in the nature of inspection or in the nature of market survey okay now understand understand in a uh, big manufacturing facilities in big manufacturing factories let's suppose a new machinery is purchased you know what they'll first do a trial run of it they'll first do a trial run of it are you aware of it so that some mishap doesn't happen in the factory so that some mishap doesn't happen in the factory they first do a trial run a test run and check if if the machinery purchase is operating effectively operating effectively or not okay so there is a cost involved to do the test run so now standard says that standard says that since i am doing this test run to bring the asset in the condition of how i want to use it hence this inspection costs hence this inspection cost has to be adjusted or added to the cost of asset add to cost of asset now market survey market survey what is the meaning of market survey so basically what happens let's suppose i opened up an amusement park okay let's suppose reliance opened up an amusement park in mumbai okay reliance opened up an amusement park in mumbai now uh, for the first week that amusement park was free of cost for the first week that amusement park was uh, free of cost okay so basically we didn't charge any any uh, ticket fees from the uh, visitors just to take just to obtain the market survey and you have seen this happening right this is some how the industry works so it was free of cost just to take the survey or a reviews of the market the cost incurred tell me can i capitalize it can i capitalize it no why because the cost that is being incurred to take the market survey is like an advertisement is like an advertisement of that market of that you can say uh, amusement park it's not it's not to bring in the condition it is already in the condition amusement park is already in the condition and that is the reason why the visitors are able to come and use the amusement park it is already in the condition hence this this market survey costs will not be capitalized rather it will be transferred to p and l so here again uh, two things gets uh, captured testing costs and market survey costs what economic benefit does the inspection cost provide very good question if you don't do the inspection you will not be able to operate the asset 
okay because uh, there are uh, let's suppose taking an example of a flight aircraft aircraft now you know what the aviation rule states that uh, when you purchase the aircraft you have to get it inspected that it is uh, operating it will operate effectively or not so that inspection requires a huge cost that has to be capitalized to the cost of aircraft that has to be capitalized to the cost of aircraft. Why? Because if you don't get the inspection done, you will not be able to operate the flight itself. You will not be able to operate the flight itself. Okay. Now comes the market survey. Now tell me, uh, now tell me, understand. If uh, now market surveys, let's suppose you have an amusement park, which you open for the visitor, that the visitors can come and use the amusement park. And I will just take the feedback from the visitors, how they liked it or what changes they want to get it done in the amusement park. Now, in this case, the amusement park is already in use. The amusement park is already in use. Hence, uh, that my, this is called as we are doing it just for the advertisement of the amusement park, and hence that market survey will be capit, uh, will be transferred to P and L. Now comes the question: What if the exam in the exam the question is silent? Even if the question is silent, the question will give you a hint. If the question is not giving you a hint, if the question is just saying uh, testing cost, just saying testing cost assume it is in the nature of inspection by default you will assume that it is in the nature of inspection by default if the question is silent you will assume it is in the nature of inspection clear everyone so this testing cost and market survey also done now over its a, B, C, D. Overheads are of two types. Allocated. Now, standard says that if it is a directly attributable overheads, you have to cap add to the cost. If it is allocated overheads, you have to transfer it to p &L. Now, the question will specifically mention whether it is directly attributable or it is allocated. The question will specifically mention. You, just, uh, you are just required to keep your eyes open for that. Keep your eyes open for that. We purchased 100 laptops for inventory to resale. We recorded the, uh, we recorded uh, already shipment costs and later we provided uh, for some laptops to employees as fixed assets. Huh, then in that case, you have to uh, do a reclassification from inventory to PPE, Kamal. In that case, you have to do a reclassification from inventory to PPE, simple. This reclassification, I am not discussing now. We will discuss it off, okay? We will discuss, guys, trust me on one part that I will discuss each and everything. I will discuss beyond what is given in the book. I will discuss beyond what is given in the book. Okay, I will make you practical world ready. I am not making you exam ready. I will be making you exam ready plus practical world ready. Shipment cost also we have added to the cost. Yes, in that case, we have to add the shipment cost to the cost of the asset. All the cost incurred to bring the asset in the location and the condition intended by the management has to be capitalized to the cost. But we recorded in COGS. Okay, now understand guys. Uh, you are just trying to play with the things. Okay, so let me make it things. Let me make things very clear. If it is a PPE, if it is a PPE, you have to add all the costs uh, till uh, it is comes in the location and condition 
you have to add all the cost to the cost of the asset. If you have recorded some cost in COGS, then you have to uh, take it out from there and capitalize. And let me tell you one thing also, even if that laptop is an inventory in that case also, in that case also, you have to add all this cost to inventory. Okay. If you are telling that we transferred all the cost to COGS, that is wrong. You cannot do that. Okay. Let's suppose you purchase 100 laptops the and you incurred a price, you incurred, let's suppose a dollar 1000 a shipment cost, then this dollar 1000 shipment cost will be capitalized to inventory, will be capitalized to inventory. Okay. Now later on, uh, later on, if that, if that laptops are sold, that will go to COGS. Later on, if that in laptops are used as fixed assets, that will be reclassified from inventory to PPE. Okay, so Kamal, I, I believe your question itself was wrong. Is that clear everyone? What future economic benefits will flow from the professional fees? Understand Ankita, let's suppose I want to purchase a laptop, okay, for my classes purposes, for my classes purposes, okay, now. Now I just want, I, uh, I inquired a technical person, I inquired a technical person, but he told that, sir, I will take a fees. I will guide you which laptop will be best suited for you, but I will take a fees. I told, okay, fine. Now let's suppose I am telling you two situations. I am not taking any professional advice. I am taking professional advice. Now, if I am taking a professional advice, if I am taking a professional advice, I will know which laptop is best suited for me and accordingly I'll buy it off. Now it will increase my efficiency. It will increase my efficiency. Why? Because I will not face, uh, I will, or I will face very less challenges during the conduct of the classes. Now let's suppose. Uh, let's suppose that I have not taken any advice and I purchased it on my own using my own brain. Okay, then what happens? It might be a case that I purchased a wrong laptop and every now and then my laptop is facing issues, right? I'm facing issues in the laptop. I'm facing issues in the laptop, right? So it will decrease my efficiency. So understand efficiency is the future economic benefit from the professional fees. Is that clear Ankita? Tell me the meaning of directly attributable costs. Is that clear to everyone? The meaning of directly attributable cost is clear to everyone. Directly attributable cost. Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Now comes provision for decommissioning site restoration and removal costs. I will not be discussing this part in detail. I will just give a quick overview of it. Okay. One, two, three, and now four. Let's take an example of oil rig. Let's take an example of oil rig. You know what is an oil rig? You know what is an oil rig? Tell me guys, you know what is an oil rig? It's an equipment. Which extracts. Petroleum from sea bed. Okay, it's an uh, equipment which extracts petroleum from sea bed. It's a very big equipment. It's quite very big equipment. Okay, you can just do a Google what is an oil rig and see the four images of it. It's quite a very uh, big asset. It's quite a very big asset. Okay, now. So what happens, it has to be installed in sea bed, okay, at the surface of the sea. Now tell me, if I have to say how big it is, then I have to, I can say it can be as big as, as a 10 floor building. It can be as big as 10 floor building, okay. 
with the uh, with the pipes that is drilled to the sea bed so you understand you know what is the depth of a sea so the pipelines the pipelines is as long as the depth of the sea so you can estimate you can estimate how big that equipment can be okay how big that equipment can be now tell me can we take that full equipment can we take that full equipment and and just fix it there or i have to dismantle and then fix it there tell me dismantle and then install it there tell me i will take that equipment in a dismantled position and then i will install it there right first i will take that equipment in dismantled condition i will reach the location where i have to install it and then i will install it there piece by piece now let's suppose the life of the equipment is 30 years the life of this oil rig is 30 years after 30 years after 30 years i will remove that oil rig from that place okay now when i am removing the oil rig from that place again tell me will i tell me again that can i take the whole equipment like this and take it out of it no i will dismantle each and every piece and then take it piece by piece right now from one specific location if you extract the petroleum for a continuously for 30 years don't you think that the quality of that area will get deteriorated tell me if you extract petroleum from a particular area till 30 years for continuously for 30 years that area will get deteriorated right so now tell me who owns that area let's suppose this company who is uh, fitting that oil rig is reliance okay reliance petroleum is installing an oil rig there now tell me but who owns that area reliance owns that area or government owns that area who owns government to so now to install an oil rig don't you think reliance has to take a permission from government reliance has to take a permission from modi ji right now when reliance goes on to take a permission from government now modi ji will say that okay okay mukesh bhai ambani i will give you the permission but if you extract oil continuously for 30 years from that specific location that oil that area will get deteriorated then why should i give you the permission why should i give you permission then mukesh ambani states that uh, modi ji definitely i know i understand your concern uh, that uh, if i continuously extract petroleum from a particular area that area will get deteriorated but don't you worry about that once i am removing the oil rig from that area i will restore that place i will restore this that place now modi ji says okay fine let's do one thing in the approval letter which i am giving you in the approval letter which i am giving you i am writing this point that you have an obligation to restore that area to restore that area once you remove the oil rig from that place okay now so that approval is given on the condition that you will restore that place are you understanding this point now understand this part let's suppose this is an oil rig this is an oil rig that is installed here okay date of installation now this is the end of 30 years year end 30 here you have to dismantle it plus you have to restore that area now tell me this dismantling or restoring don't you think it will require some huge substantial costs it will require some substantial costs Then come on guys tell me which i am bound to incur which i am bound to incur tell me yes or no right now if i don't incur will i be able to install it this machinery here if i don't in if i don't take an obligation of incurring these costs will i be able to will i be able to uh, install this machinery no 
if I will not be able to install this machinery, will I be able to extract petroleum? If I am not able to install, will I be able to extract petroleum? No. If I am unable to extract petroleum, will I get economic benefits? No. Meaning thereby, this uh, dismantling and restoration enables the entire asset to generate economic benefits. Basically, what I am trying to say here is this dismantling cost plus restoration cost does not have any economic benefits on its own. Okay. They directly doesn't have any economic benefits, but they enable the entire asset to generate economic benefit. Are you understanding this part? I will write here. These costs do not have any direct future economic benefits. Why? Why? Because it is incurred here when the asset is already uh, fully used. Okay. So it is incurred here. So what future economic benefits? In, there is no life of the in the future. So there is no future economic benefits on their own. But the obligation of these costs obligation of these costs enable the asset to be used and generate future economic benefits. Tell me yes or no. Tell me yes or no. Right? Hence, what I will say here is, I we will have to say that since we have taken an obligation here itself, since we have taken an obligation here itself, since we have taken up an obligation here itself, hence we, what we'll do is we will calculate the present value of it here. We'll calculate the present value of it here. Okay, whatever cost is will be incurred here. First of all, we will estimate the cost which will be incurred here. Okay, then we will calculate the present value and this present value will be added to cost of asset. This present value will be added to the cost of the asset. Tell me guys, is that clear to everyone till here? Is that clear to everyone till here? Clear? Now, shall, we, shall I take up an example now? What if dismantling cost is uh, more than the estimated present value? Uh, Apurva, please understand. This present value is not estimated. Okay. This is not estimated. This is calculated. And how to calculate? Do you know the concept of present value and future value? All of you, come on guys. Everyone tell me. Do you know the concept of time value of money? Okay, let me go to the building block. First concept. Concept number one. Time value of money. If I say, I will give you rupees 100, option number A, rupees 100 here, or this is year and one, or I will say, I will give you rupees 100 here, option number B, tell me which option will you take and why? Which option will you take, A or B and why? If A, then why? If B, then why? Please tell me why. And this is an obligation to pay. I have a promise to pay. I will not deny. So don't say that, sir, after one year, who has seen what will happen? You might not pay. No, that is not that is not the case. Okay, I will pay definitely. In both the case, I will pay. Now tell me which will which option will you take? There is no risk. 
Isita, there is no risk. You will have to say that, sir, I will go for option A. You know why? You know why? Because if you, if you give me 100 now, I will invest it in bank deposits and earn interest for this year and this money will become 110 years. At year end, I can make it, uh, I can make it at interest of 10% and I can make it 110, right? So 100 now is not equals to 100 after one year. No. If I would have said... <laughs> If I would have said that I will give you 100 now or 110 after one year, then, then you should become indifferent. Sir, whatever what you want to give, you can give. We are indifferent here. We are indifferent here. Why? Because uh, if you give me 110 after one year, the value of which now is 100 only. Okay. So even if I take 100 now, I will invest in bank and I will make it 110. So there is, uh, there is no, uh, there is no, you can say, uh, there is no difference. We are indifferent at this level. This is called as concept of time value of money. Now, so if you have to calculate what is the value of, what is the value of 110 here, what you will do, you will calculate present value. How to calculate present value? You will say 110 after one year divided by 10%, right? So time factor is 1.1. Time factor is 1 point, discount factor is 1.1. So this will give you a value of 100. Now, if you have to calculate the future value of this year, if you have to calculate the future value of this year is then 100 into 1.1 is 110. So this is how you will calculate present value and future value. Now, in the exam, in the exam, it might be the case that uh, you will have to calculate present value, let's suppose 30 years, right? Or let's suppose let me take five years, year and five, year and five, you have to pay some money here. Let's suppose you have, you have to pay 1000. Okay. Now you have to calculate the present value of this 1000 here. Okay. Discount rate is 10%. Discount rate is 10%. Then you will apply what? You will apply interest factor you will apply discount factor. How to calculate discount factor? Okay, I will tell you. Discount factor is 1 plus R by 100. Tell me, what is discount rate? 1 plus 10 by 100. Okay, so what is the discount factor? It is 1 plus 0 0.1. Just remember it is 10 by 100, it is not 1 plus 10 by 100, it is not this way. It is only this, okay, please be very careful. It is 1 plus 0 0.01, which gives you an amount of 1.1. Now, if you have to calculate the present value, present value will be amount that is 5000 or 1000, 1000. 1000 divided by 1.1 to the power, how many years? 5 years to the power 5 to the power 5 okay to the power 5 or if you can go to back to your school days you remember you used to study something like also how to calculate the future value so you used to say uh, principal principal multiplied by 1 plus rate by 100 to the power n do you remember this formula of future value do you remember this formula for future value right so this is the formula now this p is the present value okay now in now if you have to calculate present value then what you will do future value divided by 1 plus r by 100 to the power n is equal to present value right now so what is the future value in our example 1000 so what will you do 1000 divided by 1 plus 10 by 100 to the power n is 5 is equals to present value which is equals to 1000 divided by 1.1 to the power 5. Now tell me in the exam will you go and calculate this? Will you go and calculate this? 
no you are not required to calculate this much long so what you have to do is take your calculator everyone take your calculator everyone in your hand tell me what is the discount factor 1.1 so write 1.1 so write 1.1 i am writing here calculator trick guys i will not be explaining these tricks every now and then okay so that's the reason why i am writing in the building block so write 1.1 then then write divided divided two times okay divided 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 then press equals to equals to how many times n times press n times so here n is 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 so what is what does it come tell me what figure you got just tell me up to four decimals up to four decimals guys you have pressed four times or five times yes 0 0.6209 0 0.6209 0 0.6209 so here you will get here you will get 0 0.6209 okay then multiply with the future value and you will get the present value so future value is how much future value is how much 1000 so you know what what is the present value present value is 620.90 are you understanding are you understanding this okay now one more point one more point i will write here as case one situation a one single payment Okay, situation B. Situation B. Multiple payments of same amount and same intervals. multiple payments of same amount and same intervals uh himansu is saying it's coming as 6.683 no himansu you have to press five times i think you are pressing four times see i'll show you in my calculator see 1.1 1 .1 divided divided now equals to for five times one two three four five it is coming as 0.6209 Is it clear, Hemansu? Situation B is multiple payments of same amount and same intervals. Here you have to apply annuity factor. Guys, these are the things, these are the things uh, which you have already studied in class 10. Annuity or you can say uh, discounting, present value, you have studied. But just I'm helping you revise it off. Milna is asking, other than the screen calculator, can we carry calculator in exam? Yes, you can do that, Milna. But please ensure whichever calculator you are using, it has a function of GT. It has a function of GT and it doesn't have a memory function. Just ensure these two things. That's all, nothing else. PVF or IAF will be there on the screen or not? No, it will not be there. Okay, might be the case that the question might give you the present value factor or annuity factor in the exam, but assume that it will not be given. Okay, if they give, fine. If they don't give, you have to calculate. If it is multiple payments, like for example, let me give you an example. Five years, one, two, three, four, five. So here 1000, here 1000, here 1000 here 1000 here 1000 so this is called as then in that case you have to apply what annuity factor and how to find out annuity factor 
So now, first of all, let's go by the formula. So what will you do? It will be the present value. How to calculate the present value? Present value will be 1000 divided by, let's suppose the discount rate is 10%. So what is the present value of 1000 is 1.1 1 .1 plus. Now this 1000 is 1000 divided by 1.1, 1 .1, but for this N is two years, N is two years. So 1.1 1 .1 to the power two. Now for this one, is 1000 divided by 1.1 1 .1 to the power 3. Now for this 1000, 1000 divided by 1.1 1 .1 to the power 4. Now for this 1000, it is 1000 divided by 1.1 1 .1 to the power 5. Now honestly tell me if you uh, calculate everything, how much time will it take you? How much time will it take you? Bare minimum 10 minutes to calculate this data? Bare minimum 10 minutes? Tell me guys yes or no to calculate this you require a bare minimum 10 minutes now what if i say you can do it within one minute how again come to calculator come to calculator <laughs> type 1.1 1. 1. divided divided two times divided divided two times this is what I don't like, Milna. When I am explaining something, I don't uh, need this answer. Focus on what I am saying. Focus on what I am saying. Again, I am saying 1.1 1 .1 divided, divided two times. Divided, divided. Okay. Basically, divided, you have to write two times. Then press equals to n times. What is n here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, equals to 5 times. 1, 2, 3. 3, 4, 5. Okay. What can you see in the screen? 0 0.6209. Can you see? Can all of you see 0 0.6209 in the screen? Now, stop, stop. There will be a function called as GT in your calculator. There will be a function called as GT in your calculator. Right? Press GT. What can you see? What can you see? 3.7907 right so now 1000 multiplied by 3.3.7907 is the answer so that is 3791 is the answer okay so what i did is 1.1 uh, divided divided okay two times then equals to n times multiplied uh, then press gt then press GT and then whatever figure comes up, multiply with the uh, amount, multiply with the amount. Okay. This will give you the present value. Here it came to uh, 3.7908. Here it, the amount was 1000. The present value is 3791. What if GT function is not there, then you have to purchase a calculator with GT function. You have to purchase a calculator with GT function. Okay, it might, it will, see simple, I am using this calculator, okay. I am using this calculator, I am using this calculator, okay. This calculator simply cost around 250 rupees or 300 rupees, that's all, okay. Uh, now, so you can purchase this calculator, it will be simple. Now, what is the use of this GT? What is the use of this GT? Now, I'll tell you. So let's, I will explain the use of GT also. Please press in your calculator 1.1 1 .1 divided divided. Please press in your calculator 1.1 1 .1 divided divided and do, do equals to. Now, what is the figure that you are getting? 0 0.9090, right? 0 0.9090. This is the value of this one. Okay. Then again, equals to again, you will get 0.8264. This is the value of this one. Then again, do equals to. This is the 0.7513. This is the value of this one. Then again, do. It will give you 0.6830. This is the value of, sorry. This is the value of this one. Then again, do six. Uh, it, it gives 0.6209. It will, this is the value of this one. Right? Now, when you do GT, it adds the value of this plus this plus this plus this. Right? And now we took 1000 as common. Okay? Then we just multiply, you do GT and multiply it by 1000. Now, Himansu, you understood the function of GT. GT means grand total. 
you can use m plus functions but uh, it might be challenging to use sometimes okay uh, it might be confusing okay if you are confident in using m plus thing i am fine with that i don't have any challenges okay and there are many a times many a times uh, m plus m minus functions calculator is not allowed in the exam also okay so though every calculator has m plus m minus thing so we can't control things there are those things but i will recommend going for a gt calculator because it will uh, simplify things off scientific calculator i believe it is allowed uh, okay i believe it is allowed but the scientific calculator with a memory function is not allowed where you can store values those calculators are not allowed so this is how you will calculate the present value i believe that is very much clear to all of you now coming back to my concept coming back to my concept i have a calculator of oriva okay uh, but you can purchase oriva or pat uh, casio uh, or uh, citizen these calculators you can purchase it will cost you around 250 rupees or 300 rupees that's all nothing else okay purchase simple calculators see uh, as a person i like simple calculators like this okay I don't feel that much confident on scientific calculators. But if you think you are confident on that, it's totally good. You can go ahead with that. Uh, yes, but scientific calculator has, a, uh, has some functions to store values. If you can store values there, no, that calculator is not allowed. That calculator is not allowed. If you can store values there. Okay, normal calculators, yes, they are allowed. All the all the calculators are allowed. Okay, scientific calculator with a function to store the values are not allowed. Now, so when I said the present value, who asked me this query? I think Himansu or someone asked me this query. That now Ankita asked me this query, I guess. Hmm. Apurva, what if dismantling cost is more than the estimated PV? Apurva, you got the answer now. Apurva, you got the answer now. Okay, so you will calculate the present value of this till here. Okay, and you can capitalize it off. Tell me, is it clear everyone? Is it clear everyone? not taking up any question now because it will uh, taking question will take you another half an hour i don't want to extend that so please uh, revise whatever we have discussed in the class today first point second 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 uh, in your uh, material also please revise the first page and the second page of your chapter of non current tangible assets from the bpp kit i'm telling uh, if you are using kaplan please revise please read from your kaplan kit whatever we have discussed till Today, tomorrow, when we start the class, first of all, I will take up an example and then uh, we'll discuss that example and then we'll proceed further in the class. Is that clear, everyone? Come on, guys, tell me, is that clear, everyone? Wonderful. That's all for the day, guys. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the class and you understood uh, the concept which we discussed. Uh, yes, I believe I'm already added in the group, but still I will give me my contact number. You can, uh, I will be available over WhatsApp. You can uh, message me on WhatsApp at 8584012637. Uh, plus 91 is the India code. 8584012637 is my contact number. Okay. That's all for today, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.